Okie dokie, moving on, we are on to number 31. Uh, they want to know the total distance the object falls during the first three seconds from this graph of speed versus time. Uh, and velocity versus time graph, and I, if I want to get displacement, I'm looking for the area under the graph. And I'm only going up to the eight second mark. I'm sorry, the three second mark, which corresponds to eight meters per second. Uh, that area, being a triangle, is one half base times height. One half, three seconds is the base. The height is eight meters per second. And I get 12 meters, meters, which is choice A for about time I got an A. Uh, by the way, another way you could do this, if you don't want to use the area thing, if you say, oh, it's velocity and time, I can just say distance is average velocity times time. The average velocity is the average between 8 and 0. Uh, and you can do that with VF plus VI over 2. I'm not going to write that out. The average velocity is 4 meters per second because it goes from 0 to 8 for 3 seconds. And I once again get 12 meters, uh, which is the right answer. Okay, moving on to number 32. 32. Um, standard diagram of the direction of velocity and acceleration for a car going around a corner. And the car is roughly here. And the velocity is at a tangent. And the acceleration is inward toward the center. Central acceleration, and that is choice C. But all we have to say about that. Number 33. Give me more room. 3, 3. Uh, okay. I'm going to up this. It's a centripetal force question. I've got a mass of 1,750 kilograms, big car. Constant speed, V of 15.0 meters per second around a track with a radius R of 45.0 meters. They want the centripetal force equals question mark. Uh, I'm going to use the combo form because it's the only way to do it in one step. M, V squared over R. Uh, I'm going to put in the number, 1750 kilogram times 15.0 meters over seconds. That all gets squared, just the 15 meter per second gets squared, all divided by 45 meters. And that gives me a centripetal force of, when I do all the math, 8750 newtons, which is exactly choice C, how easy that was. Uh, 34. Here's a quick look at 33 if you want to look at that. Here comes 34. One, two, three, four. Okay. And I have this speed versus time graph. What is the acceleration during the interval 3 to 5? Uh, the acceleration on this graph is equal to the slope of a velocity time is acceleration. And so I'm going to pick the points uh, from 3 to 5. Those are points C and D. And so the velocity at D is 25 meters per second. The velocity at C is 10 meters per second divided by the time of 5 seconds minus 3 seconds. Gives me 15 over 2, which is 7.5 meter per second squared. That is choice B, as in betcha don't know why we're going on to number 35. Well, it's the next one. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. They want... From A to 10, the speed of the object is. Okay, this points F to G on the graph. Uh, at F, it's going at 10 meter per second. At G, it's going at zero. Sounds to me like it's slowing down. That's choice C. Uh, and I'm going to throw in number 36 here, since it's all on the same graph. And that is the average speed from 6 to 8 seconds. Uh, 36, average speed. Initial plus final divided by 2. Uh, so from 6 to 8, let's see, the speed at 6 is 25. The speed at 8 is 10 meters per second. Those are points E and F on the graph. Add them up, divide by 2, I get 17.5 meters per second, which is choice D. Good, moving on.